good morning class welcome to the physics online classes for class 10 in today's class we will be learning about a new chapter which is named as light reflection and refraction so from the name itself it is clear that we are going to learn about light and their phenomena which are named as reflection and refraction so in this session we are going to cover the first phenomenon that is the reflection of light so before going to the phenomenon of light let us know what is light and what are the nature and the properties of light so let's start the chapter from the first line of the book it is clear what it is written over there the light is a form of energy and light is needed to see the things around us so we can say that light is a form of energy which enables us to see the things around us so it is helping us to see the object but whether every object is needed to see with the help of a light no because some have their own light and some does not have their own light so on the basis of this object can be classified into two types first is luminous object and the second one is non luminous object so by seeing the luminous object what we can say that the object which have their own light are known as luminous object and the object which does not have their own light and does not emit their own light are known as a non luminous object from the figure we can see there are two examples first one is the electric bulb and the second one is flower so which one is the luminous object and which one is the non luminous object yes because the electric bulb emits its own light so it is a luminous object and the flower is not able to emit its own light but it is able to see with the help of the source of light because when the light falls on the flower we are able to see it so if we enter a room into a dark room we can see the objects no we have to switch on the light and to see the object so light is kept on and the light comes from a source of an object like in a room if we have a tube light in our room then tube light is a source of light if we have led or a bulb then bulb or led is a source of light so from the light comes from that object and falls on the other object for example if we have a flower in the room or a chair in the room table anything you can take any example but uh, most probably we have the bed chairs and the tables in the room so if you think of a furniture whether it is able to see in the dark no we have to switch on the light to see that object so the light which is enabling us to see the object that object will be said to be luminous and the object which is able to see with the help of the light are known as non luminous object so various examples can you take from the room uh, by seeing your environment and the surrounding that uh, in the morning when we go out we able to see the trees bikes uh, furnitures inside the room and outside the room uh, means buildings roads uh, vehicles many things which are enable to us by the help of light but outside the room which is a source of light it is sun because the sun rays falls on the object and help us to see the object so here the sun is a luminous object and can be said as a source of light and this light falls on the other object which help us to see the object okay now inside the room let us take an example of furnitures the furnitures are able to see in the dark room no we have to switch on the light so when we switch on the light the light of the bulb falls on the object and the object can be seen so object is a non luminous because it is seen with the help of the light it is not emitting the light with its own so the object which cannot emit its own light is called luminous object it's a non luminous object and the light which is coming from the source of light are the luminous object so got it so whenever the light falls into our eyes by keep coming from an object then we are able to see that object what does it mean whenever the light comes from a source of light it falls on that object and that light come back and come into our eyes and the image formation is done in our eyes we will see what laws it uh, obeys and what are the properties that the light will enter our eyes and where the image is formed but let us see the first that the properties of light and the nature of light so what we have learned about that light is a form of energy which is enables us to see the object and the object which is not emitting their own light but can be seen with the help of the source of light they are known as non luminous and the luminous object emit their own light so for example if you are switching on a light in our room then light is a luminous object and it is a source of light so let's start the next topic that is the nature of light Uh, electromagnetic wave what this word means it is a form of wave so light should be a wave it consists of electromagnetic waves it does not need a material or a medium to travel so we can say the first property of light is that that light does not need a medium to travel it just propagates without a medium and the second one how does it travel 
we can see the sun rays which are entering into our room or the home they come in the form of the straight line path right so the second property of light can be said as that the light tends to travel in the straight path so what are the true properties which we have learned now the first property that the light does not need a medium to travel and the second one that the light travels to tends to travel in a straight path so it travels in a straight line so the third property that it have dual nature what does it mean that the light travels as a wave now only we say that light is a form of electromagnetic wave which is in the range of 4000 armstrong to 7000 armstrong so this electromagnetic waves does not need a medium to travel so light also as a form of wave it does not need a medium to travel it forms to tends and to travel in a straight line path which is the second property now we can say the third property that it have the dual nature because according to the example of electromagnetic wave the light should travel in the form of wave but there is another theory that the bundle of packets are there in the light that they travels in the form of particles and which particles are telling them to travel in a particle nature that are photons the photons are the particles which are enabling the light to travel in the form of particles so the light is having both behavior that it travels in the form of wave and travels in the form of particles also so it have dual nature which is a third property and what will be the fourth property do you know the speed of light yes the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so it is the fourth property so what are the topics which we have covered now first what is light light is a form of energy which enables us to see the objects and the second thing that the objects on the basis of the light are classified on the two objects so first one was luminous and the second one was non luminous what are the luminous objects which emit their own light and the second one is non luminous which does not emit their own light but can be seen to our eyes with the help of the source of other light that uh, the object which can be seen with the help of the luminous object are said to be non luminous object after that what we have learned that nature and the property of light so from the nature of light we can say that the light have the dual nature because it have the nature of waves it follow the rules of the wave and it is a part of electromagnetic wave in the range of 4000 armstrong to 7000 armstrong and the second one is that that the light travels in the form of particle also that it follows the nature of particle also it and what are the particles that are photon so it travels in the form of particle as well as in the waves so we can say that the nature of light is dual so light is a dual nature okay so next what are the properties of light the first one it is that it is a part of electromagnetic wave so it will travel in the form of wave and it does not need a medium to travel it does not need a medium travel it means it does not have to keep the material that the light will travel through it it can travel anywhere so it does not need a medium that is the first property what is the second property that the speed of the light is 9 to 10 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and what is the third property that it have the dual nature what is the fourth property that the light travels and tends to travel themselves in the straight path have you got it yes now what is the phenomenon of light so light travels in the path it falls on an object and that the image of object is falling in our eyes and we are able to see that object so some phenomenon is going on with the help of the light and with the object so this phenomenons are of two types first one is reflection and the second one is refraction in this topic we are going to learn about reflection now what is the reflection first of all let us define what is reflection when whenever the phenomenon in which the light falls on an object then the process of sending back or bouncing back that light rays from the surface which are falling on that object is known as reflection in easy words what we can say whenever the light ray falls on an object that object is allowing to move that light to the different direction that what we can say that the light falling on the object is striked backwards or reflected backwards or bounced backwards so the process of sending back or bouncing back the light rays which falling on the surface is known as reflection got it but whether the reflection is done on every object no the surface should be polished 
and shiny surface if there is a polish on the shiny surface it is easy that for the light to reflect from that object if the object is shiny smooth and polished then the light ray reflects very easily now what the surface should be that they should be polished shine and smooth then let's take an example of mirror so mirror are of two types but here we will be learning about the plane mirror and the second one will be spherical mirror so we will be learning about that topic in different uh, session because spherical mirror is a vast topic and the new topic for you we will learn with other class so here we will be learning about a plane mirror and in the plane mirror the one side will be the reflecting surface and the other side will be the non reflecting surface so can we see in the figure that there is a plane mirror here is the plane mirror is there the front side is a reflecting surface and the second side is a non reflecting can we say that it is a non reflecting but it is polished and someone was will be the non polished surface so let's see the example first like if we are having a plane mirror like this now if i will add some lines in the backward position then what does it mean that that surface is rough so it cannot emit the light it cannot bounce back the light it cannot strike it cannot reflect back the light so let's consider that when from a source the light is coming to the surface of the mirror now this point where the light strike from that point it will be reflected now it reflected here so the light which is coming from the source this ray is said to be incident ray okay and the light which is reflected from the point is known as a reflected ray. sorry it will be the direction will be like this got it so from the definition it was clear that the light ray come from the source and falls on an object and it strikes backward from the surface or bounces back from the surface so what we can say that the light ray is coming it falls on a surface and reflecting backwards or the bouncing backwards now how to see the angle between these rays so we will name this rays now the light which is coming from a source and falling on the surface it is said to be the incident ray what it is it is incident ray okay now it is falling in an object and when it falls on the surface it strikes backwards and bounces backward now this ray is said to be it is reflected ray got it so the two rays the ray which is entering into the surface and falling on the surface from the source of light is said to be incident ray and the light ray which is bouncing back from the surface is said to be the reflected ray now let us join the line between the perpendicular line which is falling to the surface will be normal ray this ray is to said to be normal ray you can see that mn this mn is the normal ray okay so normal ray is a perpendicular line which is drawn to the surface now by seeing this normal some angle is there between the normal and these rays so we can draw the so this angles are named now what this angles are the angle which is made between the normal and the incident ray is said to be angle of incidence okay this is the incident ray now we are drawing a normal now the angle between the incident ray and the normal is said to be angle i that is angle of incidence and it is denoted by the letter angle i so the angle between the normal and the incident ray is said to be angle of incidence now the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is said to be angle r which is the angle of reflection got it one is angle of incidence and the second one is the angle of reflection and the middle the perpendicular imaginary line is said to be the normal ray now we will see the law of the reflections what this law will tell us let's see there are the two laws for the reflection now if we are having a surface the light ray is falling and it is moving 
it's reflecting back from the surface we are drawing a normal this is incident ray this is reflected ray and the angle between the normal and the incident ray is said to be angle i that is angle of incidence and the second one is angle r which is angle of reflection okay now what the law tells us that whenever the light ray which is entering into the surface the normal ray which is perpendicular to the surface and the reflected ray which is bouncing back from the surface this three should be lie on the same plane that this three should be on the same plane that it should not if the reflected ray is coming in the xy plane then it should not lie on the reflected ray should not lie on the yz plane so the normal ray reflected ray and the incident ray should lie on the same plane got it the first law now the second law what does it tell that the angle of incidence that is the angle between the normal ray and the incident ray should be equals to the angle made between the reflected ray and the normal ray so angle of incidence should be angle of it means the angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of reflection that whatever the value of the angle of incidence then the angle of reflection should be also equal to h so these are the laws of a reflection so we have learned what that what is reflection it is a process of bouncing back of a light ray from the surface is named to be reflection of light and when this light ray travels and or the bounce back or strike from the surface then ray is said to be reflected ray and the light ray which